going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Melanin Money Show, right? And as you know, we always try, try to bring on great guests who do great things, but I think this episode is going to be really unique. It's not every day that someone can teach you how to make sure you can preserve the very thing that's allowing us to have this platform here today. So Ooh, that's good. Yeah, that's you good. Know, you, know, you, don't, you, you don't think about it like that. Yeah, but yeah, this podcast right. can't happen, we don't have a voice. All right, absolutely. Yeah. So, so with no further ado, Hello. welcome uh, to the show. Yeah, my amazing Mr. Shayla. Thank you for Hi. coming to the show. Introduce the people to who you are and kind of um, a little bit about, I'm interested to know how you got into yeah. doing what you do. Yeah, well, yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. She needs a bigger engine. The celebrity <laughs> yeah, I mean, is yeah. Like, she is it. Okay. Yeah. So I'm glad to have you on. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, no, I've, I've been doing this for almost like 18 years. Uh, as a celebrity vocal coach, but I'm a celebrity vocal health expert mm. and performance expert coach because what happens sometimes you get a big misunderstanding mm. that it's just for singers, but no, I deal with speakers, high performing speakers and singers that need vocal health etiquette, need vocal health practices and holistic practices mm. in order to keep the voice to secure the bag. Mm. So um, I've been doing it for a very long time and I got into it because I, I needed a solution to a problem. I myself was dealing with severe vocal problems and at the time I was broke in college I could not afford health insurance went to an ear nose and throat doctor mm -hmm. and they told me it would cost a whole lot of money that I didn't have yeah and so I took the degrees that I had and you know research and uh, talking to a lot of different professionals in the industry as far as in, in the vocal world and I was able to heal my own self holistically from vocal nodules which are bumps callus that grow on both sides of your vocal cords okay. and causes hoarseness and raspiness and complete voice loss and so um Starting my career in doing that, I was also touring and traveling with a lot of singers. And they used to say, you know, Shayla, she, you know, go to her. She'll know what to do. Mm -hmm. And I realized, wait a minute, I'm on something here. Mm -hmm. So you were a singer and you were helping other people. Oh, okay. I was a singer and helping other people, absolutely. Um, and a speaker, too. So it wasn't just, you know, I was in both realms, right? Um, and doing it and also teaching part-time. And so I think teaching really, because it's so hard on the vocal folds, right. um, I think that's what really caused the vocal problems. Um, but I really had an opportunity to tour, my first professional tour, and I couldn't tell them that I had nodules. Mm. So I had to do something fast mm. and quick. Because they, they, they were probably cut you and got some money. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So was the solution fast or was it like a process? No, it's, it's not a quick fix. It was a process. Um, but the thing about it is, is that you have to continuously, it's like an athlete. You have to continuously work. We we are all vocal athletes here, gotcha, right? Yeah. You just this muscle is just used when you speak, like we're doing this podcast. Right. So you can't just you don't see LeBron just get on you know play off and they just get on the court right. and just do anything. No, they have to work on the off season. They have to do a lot of different things, right? Mm -hmm. Stretch things like that. So um, I had to implement all those practices in order to be able to become vocally healthy gotcha. and continuously have to do it. Gotcha. Yeah. So. When people say like vocal coach, right? Well, yeah. when people hear you say that, like again, when I first met you at the yeah. Mastermind in uh, Miami, I was like, "That's a thing." Like people, pay for that. <laughs> I didn't see the importance, right? Absolutely, to be completely transparent. So, what would you say to somebody who said like, "I don't need a vocal coach," or "Why would I need a vocal coach?" Right? Okay, so let's talk about speakers. You are mm -hmm. right? right. So, for example. You do a mastermind, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's can we math it? Yes, math it. Right, <laughs> I love it. Let's math so it. So let's math the voice, right? And and really and truly, your voice is invaluable. Facts. All right. Like really, no one can really afford your voice, like the value of it. But let's just math it, just okay. math for mathing. So let's say you do a mastermind, right? How much do you uh, charge? Twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand dollars for a mastermind, right? Let's say you were doing something like a one day event. Okay. All right. And how many people would you have at the one day event? Thirty people. Thirty people, and how much? Um, probably about high end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe at least it's a one day event. At least ten thousand. Get thirty people. That's a good thing. Okay, so ten thousand a high end, right? With thirty, how much? How much money is that? Three hundred thousand. That's three hundred thousand, right? All right, cool. Let's just work with that. Okay. All right, so you come into a hotel room. You didn't know the hotel was moldy. You wake up. Mold toxicity happens. Your voice goes. Right. You got to go stand in front of thirty people that just paid you ten thousand dollars. Right. That's three hundred thousand dollars right there. That that literally costs, but that's not all. Then you have an upsell at the end. Yeah, because that, that's that one day that yeah, yeah, yeah. going on to my yeah. program. Why? Because amateurs make money on the front end. Experts make money in the back end. Mm -hmm. Boom. So 
if you were to upsell 30 people and let's say the conversion rate is like what 30, 40 percent, mm -hmm. and then what would be the high ticket? The high ticket would probably be the twenty five thousand dollars. Twenty five thousand dollars. Let's say ten people sign. Twenty three thousand plus three hundred thousand. That's, that's half a mil. And, and just because I can't perform that one day and I can't Absolutely. get it back and I got to issue refunds yeah. because I Absolutely. can't perform. And then not only that, then you have to deal about, you have to deal with the emotional stress of that because anxiety takes over, you know, all of those things take over. And so, yeah, it's, it's a mess, uh -huh. a financial mess, an emotional mess, a physical mess. Right. Oh, it, it completely affects you holistically. Not well, to mention the bad brand equity you have with these people who promise to Because your them. voice is your brand. At the end of the day, you think about it. Look at all the powerful voices that are out there. The Tony Robbins, the Les Browns, the Neos, you know, the ETs, right? You don't have to see them to know their voice. Every voice here has a configuration, just like an NFT. Mm, she's talking heavy now. I, I've never seen somebody spin voice the way that. Yeah, yeah, just like an NFT. If you look at the monkeys, right? We're just going to say the monkeys, yeah. right? That they all look the same in some way, but what makes them special is that they all have their own special configuration. Right, right. The way in which your vocal, your voice box is, everyone has a special configuration in which your the frequencies or the vibrations of your vocal cords actually come out. So that's what we can tell the difference between your voice, your voice, mm -hmm. and your voice. And then, of course, hormonal changes and stuff like that. Right. So you need to see, as a matter of fact, I believe sooner or later the voice will also be... Uh, some sort of equity or, or, or NFT out there. Just, mm -hmm. Let's call it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. we, need to, we need to look oh, into that. I'm still in that. You know, I'm giving you credit, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm giving you credit. But seriously, um, it's a lot more than most people don't think. When you step into the room and we go downstairs besides the music playing, right, all you hear is voices. Got it. All you hear is money. Got it. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of people in our, in our mass amount that make, that make money from their voice of what they have to teach. Right. You can't teach. Because, again... I thought if you were if you were some, unless you were a celebrity singer, this was relevant to you only. No, but it sounds like it's relevant. This to is for podcasters, sports commentators, voiceover actors, actors, actresses, red carpet uh, correspondents, educators, politicians, lawyers, anyone that uses their voice for career advancement or to scale. Right. Okay, so audiobook people that do audiobooks. People that that not just do podcasts, people that do one day events, webinars, IG lives. You are selling yourself, Jesus Christ! Yeah, and that's why I tell I people I am the person you never knew that you needed. Yeah, mm. and I think we're all just kind of at a loss for words. Exactly. No pun intended. But so, like, what's the first thing that an entrepreneur or speaker, do yeah. a podcaster, what's the first thing they should do to start taking care of their voice? Well, I'll say the first thing that you do is you have to have a contingency plan. And I think lots of times people never think about the contingency plan. So that's why lots of times, especially when I'm, when I'm speaking, especially to high earning entrepreneurs or high people that are into the digital market as well, mm -hmm. I always ask them, do you have voice insurance? No one thinks about that. Mm, no. So, for example, I didn't even know it exists. Right? I was like, the thing. Until Absolutely. you mentioned it, I didn't know it was a thing. And it's funny because we all come from the financial advisory world. And like so, we sure tell people, trust right. that, yeah, no, but we tell people that they are their biggest asset. Absolutely. But we don't talk about their voice. Absolutely. Right. What if one day you woke up, all three of you woke up, and you no longer had a voice? Crazy. Game changer. What's that new Mime podcast? What's, what's that movie? What's that movie? <laughs> yeah. Is it what? Life? Is what? It, what's the movie where he only has like so many words to speak? Oh, the the, 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 um, the yeah, the the famous actor, uh, Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Yeah, I forget the name of the movie, but yeah, 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 yeah. we gotta work on that. Um, yeah, absolutely. You woke up and you can no longer speak. Can you mime an IG live? No. Nope. Can you sign language podcasts? Mm -hmm. You have to develop a whole nother skill, right? A whole nother wow. Level, right? So, do we need to do that? Is that the contingency plan? That's one. one That's just. No, no, no. That's not the, the, the contingency plan is voice insurance, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But outside of that, you need a coach. You need someone. You never see Serena Williams. You never see Steph Curry. You never see LeBron James or Michael Jordan. Or you never see none of these people. Kobe, right? You never see none of these people as great as they are without coaches. On season and off season. Right. Mm -hmm. I think I think the, 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 it's a mindset shift because what I think what happens Absolutely. is... We think of coaches like y'all are masterminds, right? So it's like yeah. you think of coaches like I'm getting someone to coach me on my skill set further. But yeah. if I don't have a voice, the skill set doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter, at all, right. matter at all. Wow. I mean, there's a lot of different things. So let's let's just kind of go down. So first thing I would say, definitely mindset shift to mm -hmm. know that. Wait a minute, no, no. There's equity on my voice. My right. voice, my voice has more than what it is. So at the end of the day, I can't just see my voice as oh, I just use it. No, 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 no. Lots of times people are not aware of how much they use their voice in a day. Right. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Negotiating calls and deals, closing deals, 
right? Speaking with clients. You use right. your voice for that all the time besides email correspondence. But how people really get to close deals with you is mm-hmm. by having conversations with you because vocal inflections actually builds trust. Mm. Yeah. Mm, so if I, I can like speak to you and I can hear the tones of your voice, it allows me to know if I can trust you with giving you 10K, 20K, 350K or not. That's why some people say, can I talk to them first before I do this? There's a reason for that. Right. So let me ask you this. It's a quick tangent. So with, with what you help people with. Yeah. Do you help them understand? Like they, they might already be successful at what they do. Absolutely. They might not understand the nuance of, hey, when you do speak, do you use these inflections or these things that build trust? Or Absolutely. Is that a part of your... Yeah, the only time that people come to me with that is when they have no voice. Gotcha. And that's when they realize, whoa, right? Hold on. Yeah. And so lots of times people don't pay attention if they don't pay. So right. sometimes if you give them free information, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. But when something valuable goes and you realize that, yo, it's messing with my bag. Yeah, the pain. That's when the pain, yeah, yeah. that's when people come and say, okay, what do I do? And mm-hmm. there is no quick fix for hoarseness. So right. I, let me just say this because from a physiological standpoint, a lot of people have a misconception about mm-hmm. what that is. So you have a sore throat, mm-hmm. right? Oh, sore throat is, right, right. The sore throat has nothing to do with hoarseness. Okay. Right? So a sore throat is where your throat is actually sore and swollen and you may be feeling some pain when you swallow but hoarseness is going into the actual voice box and your vocal cords start to become inflamed and what Mm -hmm. happens is a lot of singers and this is and speakers Mm -hmm. for example you all have probably done it and didn't know and i remember you reaching out to me and saying hey my voice lots of times people try to use throat remedies to fix a vocal fold issue Mm. right and you never you don't miss it so when you're drinking water when you're drinking tea when you're doing a lozenge when you're doing those things you're like yo i'm doing all of that and it's still not coming back it's Mm. because none of those things touch your vocal cords Now that's for another day. That's the science behind the book. Yeah, Ooh, but, right? to say you know your stuff. Yeah, I'm about to say, yeah, 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 yeah. doing it for a very, very long yeah. time. Yeah, you know, and so definitely getting a coach, a voice, but you also have to learn proper vocal utilization of your voice. Yeah, right. So breathing techniques, inflections, uh, warming up the voice, cooling down the voice after you finish speaking. Mm. Right, all of those things are important. You know, how do you handle stress? Because stress also affects the voice. All right. How do you handle um, emotional stress, anger, rage, guilt, all those things, anxiety, depression, they all literally can cause the voice to tense up. And so when you're feeling like, oh, my God, something's wrong or it's tense, it could be because of the fact that you've been highly stressed and your anxiety is up. Gotcha. And that within itself can take your voice. And so what are some physical things that we can avoid doing? Yes. Like we talked about like drinking, probably is one of the yeah. things. That's why my voice is worse. Yeah. It's worse in the past and today. But like, what's some, what's some things that we can physically avoid doing yeah. so that we don't have um, yeah. vocal voice? So first things first, I will say is you definitely have to watch your diet. Okay. You sound like what you eat. Mm. Mm. And <laughs> That's a bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You okay. sound like what you eat. Right. And so there's a lot of misconceptions out there that dairy is the only thing that causes like phlegm and mucus, mm-hmm. but it's the, anything that's like white processed. So processed rice, processed uh, white rice, white bread, all those things actually causes something called histamine to rise in your body. Mm-hmm. Histamine is what leads to infection and inflammation. So when you're finding yourself getting hoarse all the time, it's because if you went and you had that rice, and then you did that chicken, and then you had that, that bread, and then you had like all the dairy with it. It, you are a mucus enhancing machine. Too much mucus in the body is not good. Gotcha. It causes inflammation. So what I would say is first things first, you want to monitor your the mucus enhancing foods. So things like chicken, beef, and I'm gonna say you can't have them. Right. Moderation is key. So if you look at your plate and everything is just mucus on there, more than likely you're gonna end up waking up with some sort of inflammation, some sort of congestion, clogginess, phlegm, things like that. And then you're gonna find yourself speaking harder on your voice because you think that there's you're clearing your throat all the time. What's up guys? Congratulations on joining Team Black Wealth. But we'd be remiss if we didn't give you a uniform as an official player on the team. So head over to shop.melaninmoney.com and grab your official uniform for Wealth Builders of Color. We'll see y'all at practice. Right? So things like, like I said, soy, corn, bread, chicken, beef, Mm -hmm. pork, salty foods, sodas, alcohol, right? right? Um, Another thing is you have to watch your acid levels, all right? So the alcohol, the reason why your voice is going is because alcohol is acidic. So when it goes into your stomach, your stomach already has a high pH acidity. So you're adding more to that. All right. And when you're sleeping at night, especially if you're sleeping on the right side, it's not the, it's not the best side to sleep on because your stomach is upside down. 
Wow. So when your stomach's upside down, that acid from the alcohol, it comes up through your esophagus and it goes right into that voice box because uh, you're you're not swallowing. And so you wake up and be like, yo, what's going on? You literally have acid pockets in your throat. So when you're feeling the soreness and a sore throat, you got to watch your alcohol level. That's what we call laryngopharyngeal reflux, right? Big word for acid what's it, what's it? Laryngopharyngeal reflux. It's just acid reflux in the voice box. Mm-hmm. So that could be one of the reasons. Another could be <clears throat> the fact that you are dehydrated. You're not drinking enough water or you're doing a lot of caffeinated things or you're not taking care of yourself by covering up in cold weather or, you know, you're sleeping on the vents. You know, allergies, sinus, all those things, too. You have to be really, really mindful of that and watch over the counter medication decongestants because they're dehydrating. So how do you know if you're dealing with dehydration as a speaker or a podcaster? Right. If you're constantly like clearing your throat all the time, you mm-hmm. may just be dehydrated. It doesn't matter how much water you drink. Mm-hmm. If you're consuming a lot of caffeine, like coffee, alcohol, that's drying out the vocal cords. Yeah. And most people like drink that. and then eat coffee in the morning. Exactly. And then they have so it's problem, like insult right? to injury. Right. You know what right. I mean? So it's a lot of maladaptive behavior. Got you. So, yeah. so quick question. Um, you've probably seen a lot in your industry, right? Yeah. What's the biggest like horror, maybe horror dramatic story that you've seen where someone like they had maybe a, a, a bit with thirty thousand people, but like yeah. they just like their voice was gone, yeah. right? Like like what's like the big where someone yeah. just like mainly finally clicked for them? Like yo, I gotta absolutely. Solve this shit. I'll use um I'll use Justin Timberlake for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, Justin Timberlake had to cancel an entire tour, wow, or half of his tour because of some called vocal hemorrhaging. So when you don't utilize the folds properly mm-hmm. and you're constantly going on the folds, you can mm-hmm. cause blood to come into your vocal cords and cause a hemorrhage to happen. Wow. Um, mm-hmm. John Mayer, Maxwell, mm-hmm. a whole bunch of people. Um, you know, and if you hear all rasp is not good rasp. Mm-hmm. All right. So if you hear somebody raspy all the time, that's yeah. not good. Uh, and so the horror story is, you know how much money he lost from that? Mm. Can't even imagine. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? And yeah. then he had to cancel a tour, so he has to pay back people, refund tickets. Right. The money he already spent on marketing the tour. Absolutely. Or non-refundable things he did for the tour already. And for yeah. the tour already. And and things like that within itself can tarnish a brand. Right. You know, we've seen <laughs> even people, um, and I'm just going to use people because these are people in the public's eye. Right. So we've even seen people's careers at the end of their life just not be like a Whitney. Right. Right. Just just her voice just wasn't the same. Bobby mm-hmm. Brown or JoJo or Casey and JoJo. Like their voices are just not the same. Right. And there's a lot of speakers out there too whose voices are completely just well, Tony off. Robbins is, 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 is right a, to say I didn't you yeah, know, but yeah. but yes. Um and, and funny enough, I think the irony of this whole thing is that it brands him. No, I mean he's right? the guy with the raspy voice, and this is what it is. He's the guy with the raspy voice, but not everyone let me just say this. Not everyone can tolerate that. Yeah. Because a lot of us may not be able to tolerate certain frequencies of right. voice. Yeah. And so as some, a lot of people like him, there are a lot of people that just cannot tune into him. Not because he's not saying something that's real mm-hmm. or that he can't really convince people. Right. His voice is irritating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I've, I've heard that. And so, branding, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I really want you to talk to us a little bit more about the holistic health. But before we dive into that, we got a five-star review that I'd like to share really quickly. Um, this is from the Izzy Connect. Nourishment for the mind, body, soul, and pocket. I've been asleep. Thank you for waking me up. I am one of the keeping up with the Joneses era, so kind of late to the game. But so much information in one podcast recording. Now, this is a super, super long review, so I won't read the whole thing. But basically, they said the value in what you're sharing with the world is immeasurable. So um, well, thank you. the Izzy Connect, we appreciate you. We appreciate your five-star review. Again, they titled it Nourishment for the Mind, Body, Soul, and Pocket. And, and our so, voice. And yeah. And you say mind, body, soul. And you came out and you're like, well, I'm not just a vocal coach. I'm a holistic. Yeah. yeah. So can you share with us? Yeah, I mean, I'm not just a vocal coach. I'm a businesswoman that happens to be a vocal coach. Because hey, we were right. talking, mm-hmm. talking about the bag in a second. We're just, we're just, we're just money show, we got to talk about the bag. We got to get but, a, um, a Rolex like this just doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but I believe, you know, I, I'm a believer. So I believe that God literally created natural things for us to heal ourselves. I believe that there are things that the mind can do that can heal us, right? And there's foods and things that we can do to really nourish the soul. And the one thing that I... I people don't understand is that your voice is an empath. Mm. It's an empath. So any, the voice is connected to the body, the soul, the mind, you know, and everything like that. So if any one of those things are off course, the voice gets off course completely. There's actually something called muscle tension dysphonia. 
right? Which is actually dysphonia is just a fancy word of saying hoarseness. Mm -hmm. It comes strictly because of muscle tension. Wow. Do you understand? So if you've had a bad day, mm -hmm. lost money, you know, something went wrong with your podcast or something like that, or just, you know, a client, you know, ticks you off or something mm -hmm. like that. Literally, your voice box will feel it and it will automatically tighten. Mm -hmm. So when you start to feel a ring around your throat or a lump in your throat or you just feel like just something's not right, it's because your voice is literally just adjusting to life with you. And your voice goes through life with you completely. Mm, so that's why people say, I feel like I have a lump in my throat. Absolutely. A lump in your throat can be a lot of things. Acid reflux, dehydration, muscle tension, right? Improper yeah. use of the voice as you speak, right? It could be all of those things. Mm. I mean, those things. And, 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 you know, being this is the man on the money show, we and now we understand as a podcast and just as entrepreneurs, how much money we can lose Absolutely. from not having a voice. So if I'm in this place, like, all right, I want to take a better care of my voice. How do I know when, I, you know, obviously outside of you, how do I know how to find a good vocal coach? And like, how much should I be willing to spend on a vocal coach? Like, well, this is what I say. You spend as much as you know your worth. Okay. Because lots of times yes. the best is not always the cheapest and the cheapest is not always the best, mm -hmm. right? And so I've seen a lot of people go to cheap people because it's cheaper. And then what happens is that person really does not have value. They don't know many things and it makes it worse. Right. And so one of the things I always say to vocal coaches, you need insurance too. Because if you give somebody the wrong thing, they can end up suing you. Suing you. Right. right? <clears throat> so how do you look for a vocal coach? I think you want to make sure that the vocal coach is versed. Well, first you can come to me. Right. I mean, look. Because I certify vocal coaches. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so, so you have other coaches under you. I have you. other coaches under me. I, I'm in demand. I can't teach everybody. Yeah. So I scale myself that way where I actually train vocal coaches because there was a lack of integrity with information. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Y'all going to learn my curriculum. And learn to teach. So if I have to say, Card, I, I, um, I need you to go and see Carter today to do something. I can't be there because I'm with someone else. Mm -hmm. I have a coach that I know is proficient and actually mm -hmm. equipped to come and do it for you. And you can trust them because you trust me. Mm -hmm. Right? The systems. It's the systems. Yeah. It, yep. <laughs> he said, look, I told you. <laughs> systems, right? And so um, you want to make sure that that person knows what they're doing in vocal health and anatomy. Mm -hmm. You need to know that that person is giving you the correct uh uh, techniques to do when it comes to warm ups and cool downs. Um, you need to make Can sure you give the person. A, a yeah. Exercises. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just like. Just, <laughs> I need so that. I did this. I did this with Neo Davis uh, right. this morning. We were getting ready for his mastermind. One of the things you could do is just get a plastic cup, like a coffee cup or something like that, mm -hmm. or you can even get a coffee straw. If we have coffee straws here, I think we. No, no, I don't no. think we. Uh, if you don't have any coffee straws, that's okay. I can check. Um, but you could get a coffee cup. A plastic cup or a paper cup, mm -hmm. just get a little bit of a hole on the mm -hmm. bottom of it. All right. And when you put it in the bottom of it, what that's called is SOVT exercises. Okay. It just means semi occluded vocal tract. That's for you. So take it out, Carter, because you're, you're a little stick, horse. You can so, all right. So what you're going to do is, it, yeah, it's it's a oh. stick, right? But you can, but yeah. that's good because it has a hole in it, correct? Oh, no, 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 no. All right, so if it was a coffee straw, what you could do in the morning for you all, mm -hmm. and you should do this every day. Okay. You could get a, a small coffee straw. The smaller the hole, the greater the resistance. Okay. So what that does is, is it causes air to circulate back into your voice box. Mm -hmm. It meets the air coming up through your lungs, through your trachea, and it creates something called subglottal pressure. That relaxes the muscles around your vocal cords so that your muscles can stretch so mm -hmm. that you can be the best sounding at the best sound quality that you should. Right. Okay. And every single person needs to make sure that your voice is at its best when you're doing these things. Gotcha. So all you have to do is you can actually say you can actually do A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Mm -hmm. You can read something and just do it through the straw. That's going to actually relax the muscles. Or if you don't have a straw, you can get the, the cup. Mm -hmm. A bar, a small hole at the bottom of it, mm -hmm. and just speak. And you can do things like sirens. So you can go, ooh. You don't have to sing it. Just, ooh. It's waking up the voice without going so hard on the voice, right? Mm -hmm. You have to stretch the muscle. Your vocal athletes. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. You have to do that. You should do it when you are before you when you start, and you should do it at the end of the day to cool down. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right, just like how you would work out and yeah. cool down. I, don't know. I love the term vocal athlete because, as you know, as as as, as men, we we'll ask athletes on the on the on the podcast. Yeah. We honor the, the importance of yeah. stretching before and after a game. Right. We never do it for our voices, and you know, having the show maybe that's something we need to keep in mind. To yeah, and absolutely, because your voice will tell on you. And if you don't do it, you're gonna find that you're gonna be overexerting your voice for no reason. And you're wondering, yo, why is my voice like getting tired on me? It's because you literally went hold on it. 
You can't do that. You won't do that on the court. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why would you do it with your voice? What's going on, guys? I'm George. I'm Jacqueline. And I'm Carla. And we are your money mentors. But today we wanted to talk to you about a really special feature, Financial Flicks. Can you imagine an entire on-demand library of financial content across three main categories? Wealth building, entrepreneurship, and personal finance. So that you can take your finances to the next level. Guys, when you replace entertainment with education, your life will change forever. Imagine replacing one hour of Netflix with one hour of financial flicks. Imagine how much further that can take you to your financial destination. And we have the perfect library for you. Yeah, so if you're ready to financial flicks and chill with us to put more of your energy into education, then join us in the club. We can't wait to see you there. See you there. I feel I'm going to like admit this. Um, I didn't know it was like maybe wrong, but... I like music, and so to warm up my voice before I start talking, like on um, podcasting or whatever, in the mornings I'll sing. That's my thing. But it sounds like I'm going too hard because I'm I can't sing at all, and I'm trying to hit the high note. The high, the shower. Yeah, I would I would definitely um not go hard like that. I think there's a misconception too. Like you don't have to do that. That's like saying you want to go like you literally get up and you just sprint. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like no, you won't do that. You can end up hurting yourself more. Right, and injuring yourself, and you can do a lot of damage that way. So I would just say is just kind of like gently. In your sh you said the shower, perfect. Put the steam on and just breathe through your nostril, and just do like what we call like beat, like uh the 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 buzzing beat. And you go all the way up, and then work your way back down. Mm. So, you, so you do the buzzing B with the Z sound as well. Gotcha. And that'll also help you all to wake your voice up wow. and make sure that you stretch your muscle so that you can be the best sounding that you need to be. Because all of you all have a branded voice. Gotcha. Right? And it's so funny. I mean, you, you, you hear, but you don't think about it. Like, I'm, I was watching something the other day. My wife was like, is that Denzel? She, she was she was in the other room, but she, could, she knew his yeah. voice, right? Yeah. But you don't think about how powerful... Your voice, you like voice. the not, not even the voice from the impact of what you're teaching. Yeah, yeah. literally the sound. The sound of, of Frida, TD Jakes, right. you know, um, no, yeah, um, Morgan yeah. Morgan Freeman. Right. All of these people have brandable voices. Right. And I think people don't understand that people are not just paying just to see you, but people pay for the voice itself. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so for every single person on here, I don't want you to see your voice ever the same again. Oh, I no, want you to see your voice as. Wait a minute. My voice has an, a, an actual configuration mm -hmm. that can make me a lot of money. I like that. Right. Because we think about it like, oh, they're hiring that person because they're a celebrity and they're well-known. They're hiring that person because their voice is so distinct. And then from what I learned from you, there's a level of trust embedded in the tonality Absolutely. of their voice. There's a right? level of trust embedded. That's why, you know, we, we know someone like Coach Kelly. Mm -hmm. That's why she could do what she does. Yeah. Right. Because she's learned how to master the psychology of the voice. Mm -hmm. She's learned how to master inflections. So when she says, come a little closer to me, Tabitha Brown is a perfect example. Oh, you know why Tabitha Brown is Tabitha yeah, Brown? Yeah, yeah. Is that voice. because she's beautiful and she's pretty, she's a vegan? No, no, no. It was, hello there. Yeah. yeah. That is the moneymaker. Right. Wow. So, okay. So I like that. Now I feel like I need to alter my voice. Mm -hmm. um, In what, what is, way? Like... I mean, I love those warming tones. I feel mm -hmm. like I have a very distinct, when I have a very distinct way of communicating, they know this. But I feel like one of the biggest hurdles for a lot of us, especially getting like on social media, right? Like mm -hmm. now video is the thing. Yeah. And a lot of us want to talk because we can't dance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or is that just Speak me? for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I will dance, so. Um, but I feel like confidence is what's lacking, right? So there'll be yeah. certain times you pull out your phone and you, especially as women, like talk, and then I'm like, I don't like the way my voice sounded. I'm just going to delete it. I'm going to redo it because I just don't like the way my voice sounds. Yeah. So what's your recommendation? Yeah, no, so that? that's good because one of the biggest uh, complaints that I get from, it doesn't matter how long you've been speaking, there's a lot of people that deal with vocal insecurity mm. um, and lack of vocal acceptance. And what we find is, is that a lot of people that are dealing with vocal insecurity is a lot deeper than just the voice. It's really more self-acceptance. Yeah. Yes. Right, we have been finding with people that deal with um stage uh, performance anxiety, stage fright. Yeah. We find a lot of people that deal with performance anxiety and stage fright also deals with anxiety itself. About seventy three percent of people do that nationally, right? So because of that, what I would say to something like that is, I would definitely get with a coach that can actually do um vocal affirmations with you to learn to accept the sound of your voice. And if there's something that has like a uh, uh, an inclination of something that we can actually direct, but you don't want to change 
the algorithm of your voice, though. Right. Right. You it's it's I mean? still you. Yeah. Because it's still you at the end of the day. So it's really about, it's like very much so when we were listening to a speaker talk, Nick, you know, and he yeah. was saying about, I took what I had, and even though I could have seen it negatively, I turned it positively. So alter may not be the, the word. Mm -hmm. I would say learn to discover all the good things about your voice and then Embrace. the things that um, that are adjustable that would make it even better but not take away from who you are, then you can find a coach to work with you on that, right. right? Because I can give you all the methods in the world, but if you still don't believe that your voice is enough, it doesn't do anything. It's the, so it's mindset over skill set. Wow. So, so another quick question, as they say, asking for a friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so to your point, it's not about changing your voice, but it's no doubt that uh, speaking is a skill set, right? Some people get on stage and like they can just they got it, right? Yeah. So like, what are maybe some fundamental uh, tips and tricks that you can like share with us, like because you've seen so many great speakers, like right? things where like they're able to do, which is like man, they're captivating the audience, they're bringing them in. Like, what are some things that people can do who love their voice, yeah. but are looking to better refine it? So addiction definitely uh, defines like resonation, right? So. You want to make sure that you're still working on uh, practicing your diction, working mm -hmm. on making sure that you still practice of how to speak in front of a camera. Like yeah. never not stop learning. Yeah. Right? It's almost like if you like you play ball and, and forever, you, you'll get back on the court. Right. And just, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. You gotta you gotta have you gotta practice. Okay, that makes sense. You that have to. Sense. You have yeah. to. I mean, at the end of the day, um, if you don't see the value in it, you're not gonna do anything. Right. And I think lots of times, the only time that a lot not the only time, but most times when people finally find the value is mm -hmm. when it matters most in a situation where there's a lot at stake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I get we, we like to operate out of a place of crisis. Like everybody right. does. Yeah. Like something happens and you're like, oh, yeah. Now, now I need to do So before to. that happens, can you give us the math of, I was going to say life insurance, but vocal insurance. Is that what it's called yeah. technically? So yeah. Some people will say, some people will say uh, disability. Some people will say certain things, but look at it this way. J-Lo. Love her. She insured her butt. Did she? Yeah. You can shoot. I didn't right? know. James Harden, he, James Harden shoot his beard. He did? Yeah, he did. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, James Harden shoot his beard. Uh, Tina Turner, she insured her legs. Cher okay. insured her legs. Mm -hmm. Model insured his voice. Whatever the money maker is for you that brands you, it, it it is absolutely imperative that you insure it. And so when it comes to that, it, most people would say disability, but really it's it's partial partial, you know, partial body insurance, but it's a, it's probably one of the greatest assets. I've right. heard somebody say that the greatest asset is your mind. I, I don't disagree with it. I will just continue it further and say the greatest assets are your mind and your voice. You can't get, yeah. you can't project what's in your mind if you can't speak it. If you can't it. speak so, it out. I mean, you can write it yeah, out, yeah, yeah, of course. So probably like, like, like own occupation, rider, right. like yeah. on disability insurance. Absolutely. Okay. So it's a rider, like on the... Yes, but you have to be able to you have to be able to do it through someone that specializes in speakers, entertainment. Got it. Right. So it has to be a spe it's a specialty. Okay. So, so right, exactly. So I go through a broker, but then I'm the agent and you come through me and then my team does everything for you. Got it. Okay. And because I'm a trusted individual, um, and I'm a trusted coach, then it's like Shayla got me. I'm good. Vertical, so and, know, vertical integration. Yeah, that's what you got going. Like, 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 the financial yeah. industry, like you know, you, your, your financial advisor also right. finds you an accountant, insurance, the whole, you know, the the real estate right. agent. Like, you know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, I have influencer clients now. I'm like, oh, we gotta add this to the list. Yeah, so <laughs> right. I know kind of what the cost of disability is, and it for those watching it, I mean, it varies on your income, yeah. you know, what you make yeah. and all that. So. What is that? You know, so for on the low end like? for me, if if my team is gonna come and do it with you, on the low end for one individual, just for coverage for a year, where we're able to do the policy for you, brokerage, everything like that, it starts at ten k. Okay. All right. And it's that's per and year for insurance. That's per year per individual, and it's a la carte, right? Yeah. It starts at ten k, but it depends on what the policy is because I have yeah. some clients that may not need a two million dollar policy. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but when it comes to just my services, it starts at ten k. And then we just kind of see what are the needs and how much we need to put on your voice. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And it depends on where you are exactly. Yeah. Because if you're if you're um, uh, ET who's charging fifty to seventy five thousand dollars per speaker, or Myron Golden, or somebody, or a Tony Robbins, mm -hmm. their insurance is going to be a lot more, yeah. which means that the cost is going to be a little bit more. Wait, right? I want to get really granular. Um, so n normally there's a waiting period, like 30, 60, 90 days. Absolutely. How long? I would say you have to give me 30 days because we have to just make sure that we go through the whole entire thing. And then my team actually does it for you. So because of that, we have to go through a process. So we start with a two-week process first. We get all the information that we need, get with my broker, and we take it from there. So I normally tell people to do that. 
No, no, no. So, I mean, not to get the policy in there. Yeah. I mean, like, the actual policy itself. Right. So, like, say I lost, is that what you're talking about? Say I lost my voice for 90 days. Like, mm -hmm. my policy would kick in at 90 days. What's going on, guys? My name is George Atchampong. I'm Jacqueline Shattuck. And I'm Carter Cofield. And we are the founders of Melanin Money. And the reason why we started Melanin Money is because we know that there's a great disparity when it comes to building wealth among people of color. We have a tremendous mission that we want you guys to join. Right. Every single year, we want to help at least 1,000 people improve their net worth by $100,000, which will create $100 million of new black wealth every single year. Can you imagine $100 million of new black wealth every year? As it stands right now, for every $1 that a white family has, a black family has a mere 10 cents to match that dollar. We want to increase the wealth in the black community so that we can have equal opportunities. Simply put, we're about closing the wealth gap, and it starts with you. So, see you inside. Well, so if you lost your voice, if you lost your voice for ninety days, yeah. Like, I guess, like, um, how does the policy work? Where like, I have this event, the mechanics of it, and it doesn't. It's, I can't speak at it. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, if my policy is in place with that, they give me the money back. I recoup from not being able to do that. Right. Well, of course. So it would, it would be up to sixty days because okay. at the end of the day, we have to just make sure, like, because you don't know, fraud. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, 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 yeah. we still have to. We still have to make sure it's legit, you know, because yeah, nice. then anybody could be claiming I lost my voice. I can't, you know, I, I, I I can't see it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And different things like that. Yeah. So I, it's up to 60 days, uh, right? Okay. It could be even sooner, but it really depends on the severity of the situation mm -hmm. and where it's at. That 60, like, I can't imagine losing my voice for 60 days. That's all oh, no, 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 yeah. but it happens. So that's really scary to me. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. It, it, the average person that deals with local nodules and hemorrhaging can lose their voice up to six months. <laughs> That's the that's the consequence of not being able to take care of the voice. That's why you gotta be proactive. Right? Not only that, but a lot of people try to do quick fixes by going to doctors and having surgery. Surgery is only a corrective measure; it's not a preventative measure. So you can go get surgery, but if you still don't fix the behavior, Maybe, it'll it's like come back guess. again. And right. then people don't ever think about the recovery after after um, surgery. Right. So you have some people that have had real severe damage to their vo the folds, and they don't go back into speaking or singing until four to six months after. Mm. So normally what we do is we assess it and see, okay, what is the severity of it? And try our best, but we still have to make sure that we cross, dot every I and cross every T. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you don't, because of fraud situations, yes. right? Um, and just making sure we go through the necessary steps to just mm -hmm. make sure that all of the clients that we have, that we're able to make sure that we can serve them, serve them uh, quickly, right. especially if you're a high performing speaker or singer. But at the same time, too, they have to understand the integrity of it as well. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. makes yeah, sense. that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So. You, you told us about your biggest crisis story. Yeah. That you saw with um, celebrities. What about your biggest success story? Yeah. Man, I have a lot of them. <laughs> we know, we know, we know. I, saw, I, saw, I think oh, one okay. of the highlights for me is when I had a chance to work with Patti LaBelle. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I worked with her in the Grammys last year, uh -huh. and I think that was really cool because she's an icon. And, right. um, and then, of course, my godmother was the legendary Betty Wright, uh, who uh -huh. was, you know, was the first millionaire artist on her own label to go gold. Um, and I traveled with her for 17 years and was able to learn a lot about the industry. Um, and then of course now I think one of the biggest things is working with people like Neo now and yeah. stuff like that. Literally and, helping him. And literally like walking and helping at, at him crisis. and everything like that. Oh, we're talking about affiliate link below. By the way. Uh, yeah. yeah, you know, but yeah, like um, I think Patty was a big highlight for me. Um, and just doing Grammys, I think that was yeah. a big highlight for me in the in the music world. Mm -hmm. Um. I've worked with a lot of high-end um, speakers, especially pastors. Mm -hmm. So Darius Daniels is one of my clients. Oh, okay. um, Neo is one of my clients. You know, so, um, but I would say Patty for now. And Queen Latifah. Oh, that's her too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's a lot of highlights. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say it's a lot. That's a lot. That's a lot. Uh, so you said something about, uh, you said the word millionaires. It just brought me to one of the questions. That I want to make sure we ask you this one. I'll find the questions that we ask all guests. I know you personally. I know you're going to be doing at least six figures a month every month yeah. this year, which will make you a melanin millionaire, yeah. right? So our, my question is, what does being a melanin millionaire uh, mean to you? Woo! Uh, being a melanin millionaire means to me, first and foremost, one of the things I want to do is retire my mom. That's my why, because okay. I am single. I don't have any children as of yet. So um, retiring my mom. Um, I really also, too, I'm going to be the first millionaire well, mm. first billionaire, too. Oh, hey! Black hey. billionaire. Somebody give her a shirt. Somebody give us a shirt. Black I've been a multiple six-figure earner for years. You know what I mean? And I'm bored of making six figures. 
You said that earlier. So I said it earlier on stage, right? So because of that, um, for me, it means um, creating a whole new narrative for my family. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, my mother, all I've seen her do is work. Mm -hmm. You know, um, she's a baby boomer, so they don't know any entrepreneurship right. is a curse word. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So at the end of the day, yeah. for her to see that, wait a minute, this thing works. Like my daughter's doing this, it really works. Mm -hmm. And I think also to people like myself and creatives, mm -hmm. because I yeah. really have this thing for creatives. I'm tired of seeing the feast and famine cycle of creatives, right. of being mm -hmm. starving creatives. And so I want to change the narrative of that too, that we can be creative and we can be Run up a bag at the same yeah, time. Yeah, and right in a bag at the same right. time. And just leaving a legacy. I think yeah. this is legacy for me. The fact that I get a chance to yeah. sit with you all and have an imprint right here on this or, or the podcast mm -hmm. um, is legacy for me. So I think, and then also giving back because I'm really big on philanthropy work. And so um, I help um, orphans in Haiti. And I want to be able to literally um, fund them for the rest of their lives until they're 18 and they're able to do whatever wow. they want to. I do it now, but I would be. I want to be able to do all the children that do that. So it's a lot of that. Awesome. It means to me giving yeah, back. Thank you for sure. And, you know, yeah. and it's so interesting that you say. I'm just intrigued by that because you're saying that you know Betty is family and your daughter traveling, yeah. and so like it's kind of looking at the full generational wealth picture. Yeah. Was like money a conversation going? Money up? was never. The only conversation that money was was you had to go to college, get a four year degree, go work for somebody. Like I was never taught financial literacy. So a lot of I made a I made a lot of mistakes in business. I lost a lot of money in business because I. I so that's why mentorship is so important for me. And I think it also means for me getting more mentorship. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, like just sitting at the feet of people and learning. I love to learn. Um, but yeah, I was never taught financial literacy, so money was never a conversation in my family, and it still isn't. Well, you can, it can change with you. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it has to change. Yeah, what, what's, the, what's the quote? Uh, poverty ran to my family until it ran to me. Until it ran to me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, get away from here. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for the entrepreneurs who are listening, yeah. we know you certify vocal coaches. Yeah. So can you tell us what's the process like to get yeah. certified and what can they kind of expect to make ballpark? Absolutely. So it's a three phase, three phases. The first one is DIY do it yourself. Mm -hmm. So they actually go on a course. They can sign up for that. They have 90 days to do phase one. Mm -hmm. All right. And after they do that, then they go to phase two. And this is where I have my uh, master instructors that are under me that actually teach those courses. That's mm -hmm. a six month course. And then the phase phase three is when you become a master instructor. That's another six months because it's literally taken about four years of information and putting it into a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Right. And so um, it's intense. Mm -hmm. It's intense. And then, and then after that, you know, I also invite them to join my inner circle so that they can actually walk closely with me for a year, right? Because even though they're doing the phases, they don't get all access to me. Mm -hmm. But if they do my inner circle, they get all access to me while still getting certification. So nice. it's like a win for them. So like roughly, this is new information to me. Yeah. So roughly, what can they expect to make of coming out of the program? Coming out of it if they work it. Yeah. And because I also teach the business of vocal coaching. Right. So it's not just about, hey, do this with clients. But it I also teach them. Hourly rate yeah. Like, yeah. No, no, no. I teach them how to become their own bosses, how to build curriculums, develop them, and then how to price and everything like that. Mm -hmm. They can make clearly up to ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a month. Mm -hmm. And if they learn HTO, like high ticket offers, they can make sky's the limit. Yeah, I love yeah. that. And yeah. I do have about, I have 30, 30 right now in my inner circle. I have about 20 coaches outside of that that are under me certified. Nice. And 10 of them right now are learning are in my inner circle of the 20 that got certified. Wow. And teach for me. Now do that math. Y'all see, it could be a very profitable business. <laughs> that, that math is mathing right there. It is. It's, it's, it it's is. that new uh, uh, real sound. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a misconception that, you know, local coaches are just this me or no. Yeah. And, no, it's, cool. and it's and it's not. needed. So it's needed. It's you're now the Airbnb tour of vocal Come on, right. I like that. <laughs> I like that. I, I received that. Um, yeah, that's what it is. But yeah, I think that's uh, you gave us a great a great perspective shift. Um, you know, the, the celebrity vocal coach, Mr. Shady. I just want to personally thank you. Oh, thank you. For coming oh, on to the podcast. Thank you, so much. I, I thank you all for tuning in. And um, other than that, I think we can wrap, y'all. Absolutely. Appreciate Peace. you. Peace. Peace.